What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Battle of the Bookshelves Part 3. This is a cool crossover event that Giles and I have been working on. What's going on, Giles? How are you today? I'm super excited. Um, if you guys haven't seen number one and number two, you should go check it out because the reigning champion, not that there's really a champion, but there's champion, is back this time, and it's taking on two new contenders. I'm super excited because I've personally had experience with all three speakers, and I'm a fan of all three of them. So it's kind of like, oh, like who's gonna win? So if you haven't checked out those videos, they're available on Giles' channel, Home Theater Fanatics. Up, um, up here somewhere. I think it might be on... My, Over here. Yeah, I think it might be right here. Yeah, it'll be right there. It might be right here. Okay, so what we got in store for you guys today, obviously the Aperion Varus three grand bookshelves are coming back to maintain their title. Maybe. M possibly. Maybe. We also have the Martin Logan 35 XTIs and as well as... The Kef LS50 Metas. Now, not the old ones, but the new ones. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about this, but these are the ones that have the cool new meta material built in to improve sound. Now, does it really? Oh, we'll find out. I'm excited. Stay tuned because we're going to go over a little bit about each speaker as well as give you our final thought eventually on who is the winner. Absolutely. So, stay tuned, guys. All right, guys, so here we have the reigning champion, the Aperion Audio Varus Three Grand Bookshelf. Now, there was a lot of different characteristics about this speaker that Giles and I really enjoyed in the last episode, or in the last uh, competition we had. Um, aesthetics alone, I think this speaker is absolutely gorgeous. There's a nice gloss finish to it, and it does come in a gloss black, which, as you know, black's my favorite color. It is his favorite color for whatever reason. <laughs> it's got the um, five-way binding post in the back, so you can actually buy, buy amp it or buy wire it, however you want to do it. I usually just go, obviously, like a normal human being and go through the bottom. And, However, and one, one thing that's very important to note is that this doesn't have the standard bars. Um, it actually comes with the real wire mm -hmm. as jumpers, right? So it, it's not some little piece of flimsy metal. Um, and also, this little doohickey here comes out and what that allows you to do is change the relative volume of the tweeter to the mid bass driver so you can give it plus or, or minus uh, what is it three decibels something like that uh, just by moving this jumper around yeah which is extremely uncommon in a speaker at this level of cost well dude i think these did the nylon braided jumpers look like absolute quality i i think it's just like a great quality looking speaker so um uh, you know, there's a lot of features. Uh, from what I heard before, it sounded absolutely fantastic. It had a very mellow, nice bass, nice low end. It had a very nice treble to it. Wasn't too bright. It's not know? too bright, no. It's, it's kind um, of a laid back speaker. Um, maybe not as laid back as the Kef Q 350s that it went up against before, but still pretty, pretty laid back. Not, not super forward, not super bright. Right on. Yeah. All right, well, let's go ahead and bring on our next contestant. What do we got? So this is the KEF LS50 Meta. So there's a ton of technology in these units, and to start on the front, you've got the UniQ driver. I think this is the version 12 of the UniQ, and I believe you cover that in your video, right? Yes, the uh, video here. is a, the video up here is is available. Uh, I go more in depth on the specs and stuff like that, and what I thought about the speaker personally. However, uh, Giles, I mean, you hit the nail with the hammer. The technology that went into this, especially the meta material that these LS50 Metas have, yeah. is. It, it, it's really cutting edge, and I think it's cool. But honestly, what got me about the speaker is the style, dude. Oh, it looks so good. Dude, it's like, I can't even describe. It's, it feels like cold metal, you it, know? It, it is. I mean, you can't hear this, but it is, like, dead. It's like, there's no hollowness whatsoever it's to dead. it. It's a flat matte black. And what I love the most, and I, you guys are going to think I'm absolutely nuts. You are. Is the smoke black five-way binding posts in the back. And I finally learned how to say five-way binding posts instead of banana plug connectors. So, <laughs> you didn't catch that, but in the-, in the No, I, I didn't catch in that. In the last video we did, um, it was the video about the Accurus A2002, I said banana plug connectors and you didn't stop me. And I, I actually put a little disclaimer saying I need to learn how to say five-way binding posts. But uh, I finally learned, obviously. And another weird thing about this speaker, is if you put your fingers inside the base port, it's like soft. It's like a soft rubber material, like a soft, I, I, I don't know what what to call that. What do you, touch it. What would you call that? Oh, it's, it's like a plastic coat. Like a silicone? Yeah, it's, it's like a layer over over the, 
I don't know. It's like a soft plastic coat. It's like a rubbery. Yeah. So it, it's maybe kind of like what you'd find in the interior of a car, kind of, on the kinda, dash. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, overall, I think these are going to be cool. I'm excited to hear them. Uh, obviously, in a more of a competitive and evalu- evaluative way. But um, I like them. Yeah, they're great. Now, the next set of speakers that we're going to look at, uh, the Martin Logan 35 XTIs. Now, these are a departure in technology from either of these prior to. And I think if you take a look, you can notice exactly what the big difference is. Uh, this beautiful AMT tweeter. Yeah, so is, is this a, a AMT? Mm-hmm. So so it's not a ribbon. No. It's, it's an air motion transfer speaker, um, which are similar, but not quite the same. It's also not the same as a planar magnetic speaker, which looks similar as well. Well, now the one advantage that this speaker is going to have against the other two is the size of the driver. This is a six yeah, and a half inch guy. Uh, driver as opposed to the five and a quarters that the other two have, uh, as well as the uh, AMT tweeter. So right off the bat, I could probably tell you this is going to be a very warm speaker and have probably a bit more bass response just because of the, the sheer size of it. Um, the finish is gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and what's really, really cool is once you get done with the front, um, you flip around to the back and these binding posts are crazy. I mean, just the shape. Very unique. Yeah, very, very unique, unique. design. Um, they do have the traditional, you know, a binding uh, binding post things that Giles was talking about earlier instead of the, the nylon braided wiring. But I, I think this is cool. I think this has a very cool look to it. Um, base port's ginormous. Uh, dude. Great looking speaker, great design. Obviously, you expect that from Martin Logan. That it's it, Martin Logan has always exuded luxury, you know. So yeah, and the finish on this one does not disappoint. It, it's nice. Of course, all of them are nice. Yeah. Uh, once you get up to this price point, if it doesn't look nice, then mm-hmm. something's probably wrong. And, um, and the cool thing is, we've we've chosen speakers that are all around the same price point. They're, they're, so. they're pretty close. Now the yeah. Appearians, I believe, come in at the low end, and they're what. Seven, eight, nine hundred dollars. About thousand. Uh, so thousand the periods bucks. come about thousand. Uh, these are about twelve ninety nine, and the caps are fourteen ninety nine. So we, they're all within five hundred dollars of each other, which I would consider is in the same league. Yeah, and these are yeah. kind of in the sweet spot of cost because you can buy four thousand dollar bookshelves, you can buy two hundred dollar bookshelves, mm-hmm. but this is where the technology and the sound really gives you a lot for your money. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One other thing to note is that as we look at all these speakers, they're all base reflex design, Mm -hmm. so they're all rear ported, so there's no front port, uh, there's no sealed, but the one big difference between the three different models is that this has the uh, AMT tweeter and the others have traditional tweeters, Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, we're gonna go ahead and give you a little bit of uh, uh, details on each speaker, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, do our final thought. See what happens. Let's do this thing. Let's roll. Here are the specs for the speakers. The LS50 Meta has been a highly anticipated release by Kef, who designed this loudspeaker around the UniQ 12th generation with Meta Material Absorption Technology Driver Array. It features a 5.25 inch aluminum cone driver and an integrated vented aluminum dome tweeter. It's a two-way bass reflex system with a frequency range from 79Hz to 28kHz. Its sensitivity is 85 decibels and only requires 40 to 100 watts of power. Its nominal impedance is 8 ohms. Following, the Martin Logan 35 XTI is a powerful stand mount speaker in their motion series of speakers. It features a folded motion XT tweeter, which is proprietary to Martin Logan's offerings, and a 6.5 inch aluminum cone driver and rear firing base port. Its frequency response ranges from 50 Hz to 25 kilohertz. Its sensitivity is 92 decibels, and its recommended power is 20 to 250 watts. The speaker's nominal impedance is 4 ohms. Finally, the Aperion Audio Varus 3 Grand Bookshelf speaker is their latest iteration of their Varus line. It features a 5.25 inch Kevlar woofer with aluminum phase plug and a 1 inch silk dome tweeter. It has an advanced crossover network and personalized sound tuning with their treble mod feature. It's a bass reflex design and the frequency response ranges from 45Hz to 30kHz with an impedance of 6 ohms and sensitivity rated at 85 decibels. Its recommended power is 20 to 100 watts. Now that you know about the specs of these speakers, let's talk a little bit about how we feel about them and what they sounded like to us. Now, to get started, let's talk about the system that we listen to them in. So, uh, you know, we used what I would consider to be a solid 
low to mid-fi environment uh, so that you're not really looking at, okay, you have $20,000 worth of source material playing into, you know, kind of lower tier speakers. So the stack starts out with a, it's not a Pi-Fi, I wish it were, I wish it was Mike's Pi-Fi, but it is a Raspberry Pi that I built. Mm. Which is the maybe the J Fi? Which is the J Fi? The J Fi. Which all these streamers are all very similar. They, so they are, it's yeah. not like you're going to have an absolute audible difference on one to the other. Um, however, Volumio is a great source to yep. run it through. So J Fi, uh, which is a Raspberry Pi with Volumio using Cobuzz, mm -hmm. that goes to an external topping E30 DAC, which is a great buy, about $130. Great. I, yeah. I have the same one, and it sounds it's, it's, it's really good. It's, it's super transparent. From the topping DAC, we go down to our preamp, which is a Ship Freya Plus. This thing's really cool. It runs in three different modes. And for this listening test, we do have the tubes turned on. So, uh, you know, that might color the sound a bit, which is what a tube is really supposed mm -hmm. to do. Uh, but that's how we were running them today. And then from there, we go down to a Crown XLS 1502, which kind of like a, it's a fan favorite amplifier. It's a good price point. Um, I think of it as a kind of an every man's amplifier that you see all over the place. Um, again, class D, very transparent. Um, and uh, that gave us plenty of juice to power all of these speakers equally. Exactly. And we kept it at the same volume just to see if there's any, any difference in volume and stuff like that, which which there was. Oh, case a lot. Point. Yeah. There was a huge difference in volume. So and that is just a you know, goes to show how the sensitivity of a speaker affects it. So once you start A and Bing and seeing, you know, uh, your 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 options it, that's when you kind of start to realize like, okay, I'm missing out on this and this that's and right. this and this. That's right. So that's why it's very refreshing because when you listen to one speaker, you're like, okay, that sounds good, right? Yeah, there's no context. Right. You you, you like it or you don't. Yeah. Um, and then once you get into evaluation on different options, then you're like, wow, I didn't I didn't know I was missing out on that. That's right. Now that's right. So okay, so let's get let's go ahead and get started with the Kef uh, LS50 Meta. Let's bring it. Let's bring this bad boy back up here. Yeah, this is a beast of a speaker. All right, guys. So Giles is actually going to be reviewing this. So you had a little bit of time to spend right. with it. Uh, what was your first impression? Like, what, what did you think? Obviously, obviously, it looks good. Yeah. So that's the first thing that jumps out because it looks much different than your traditional two or three driver bookshelf speaker. Um, but from a sonic point of view, the mid range on these is outstanding. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the bass for me was not super strong. It, it wasn't not there, but it's not super impactful. And honestly, I would run all of these with a subwoofer if, if I set them up in my home. Um, but if you're just comparing straight bass, this had less than the Martin Logan, and we'll talk about that in a bit. And maybe the same or a little bit more on par with the Aperion, but the mid range on these is amazing the vocals it's like they step forward from the speaker a little bit and they're they're rich and they sound like honey and it just drips from your ears as you listen to it yeah i know it's weird but uh it it's really warm it's not super neutral it's a little more warm for me than neutral but i really enjoy that sound um if you've heard a kef speaker before this sounds this is a kef speaker like a kef yeah. speaker yeah um so i i, I really enjoyed that well, what I liked about it was uh, the off-axis response. I mean, we were kind of sitting in different areas, and you could literally be immersed into the music. As you mentioned, the mids and highs were very impressive, not fatiguing whatsoever. Uh, I really liked the clarity. You, yeah. you, uh, it was a point in one of the songs we were listening to where there was like a like a very like high pitched like symbol or something that was that was very. It was a bell. It was like a triangle. Something, thing. yeah. Something that was very very high pitched, and it picked it up. And get, it actually did the best job with that particular song and that particular instrument. So reproduction of instruments is very important, and these ones do it very well. But as Giles mentioned, and as I mentioned in my video that I did independently, uh, the bass just wasn't there for me. And that is actually something that's very important, I think, in a, in a stand mountain bookshelf speakers that have some kind of uh, definitive uh, low end. So for that reason, I, I you know, I, I was, like I said, I was very impressed with the looks and the overall clarity. However, I, I do wish they had a little bit extra bass. Yeah, beyond that, imaging was very good. Mm -hmm. uh, soundstage was very good as well. So you you know, you got that kind of holographic uh, floating image in the, in the middle of the stereo pair and it was quite wide in the room. So I had no issues from that point of view. Uh, 
like I said before, very solid, really great on vocals, weak on bass. Yeah. When we, we did pair it with a subwoofer, and I was like... Oh, it, it yeah. takes it to the next level. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. So, all right, what's next in line, Giles? Let's do, uh, let's do the reigning champion. Really? Yeah, well, let's just do it now. Let's get it out of the way. All right. Hyperion. Hyperion Audio. So the Hyperion Audio Varus Three Grand Towers were the champion on the uh, the last on the last two. two. Yeah. Um, and for obvious reasons, uh, low end response is very nice. Uh, the the mids and highs. It's a very neutral speaker. It's very balanced. It's very well balanced. Like extremely well balanced. So for that reason, th that's I think why they won the, the last few uh, competitions. Um, it's, it's a good all arounder, right? I think it looks great. Yeah, it's a great looking speaker. Um, it performed very well. However, this is this is where the, the the kicker came in. So when we auditioned them, we auditioned them last, and all of a sudden the, the everything got quieter. So. Obviously, they, they, they are less sensitive than the other two that we were auditioning. So that was actually like painfully not noticeable. Yeah, so, and, and that's one thing. When you listen to speakers, uh, a, a lot of people will be taken in by the volume. So that's something you have to consider. So these are less sensitive than both of the other options. Um, and I think that's a, just a side effect of all the technology that's built in because there's a fairly extensive and complicated crossover inside of this guy that uh, you know you can use with a little uh, plug that we showed you before that allows you to change the relative volume of the tweeter. So overall, Giles, what, what do you what do you think about this speaker um, this time around? This time around, <laughs> well, I, I think it's just as good as it was the times before. Uh, the bonuses on this, I think it's a great all around speaker. Um, if you're not going to use a subwoofer, I think this is one of the ones to, to go with. Um, it has a little more bass, I think, than the LS50s, but still not a lot. Um, it's a very neutral sound, maybe even a little laid back at the top end. It's mm. not bright. It's not forward like the LS50s, um, but it doesn't have the sparkle and the crispness that the Martin Logans have that we'll talk about in just a minute. Um, all in all, for the money, it's a really good buy, and it sounds wonderful. Great value. Yeah. At 1000 bucks. this is absolute great value. I think this is a great choice. Uh, the looks are nice, the sounds nice, uh, and that's why it won two, two, you know, two competitions in a row. That's right. Because it is a very balanced speaker that has absolute incredible value. So yeah, uh, what's next? What's next? Uh, I think we got the Martin Logan. Martin Logan. Now Our, this speaker, this big daddy, this big. So I have already done a, an independent review of this speaker as well. Uh, Giles will be doing one here shortly. Um, you can find it right here. There. Um, right off the bat, bass response was better than the other two, which I had suspected only because of the mere size difference of the, the driver. I thought it sounded incredibly warm, and that's 100% mainly because of the AMT tweeter. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of AMT tweeters, but I am also a huge fan of Silk Dome tweeters, so, and Beryllium tweeters. I, I, like all, I like all kinds of tweeters. But, uh, but honestly, AMT has a certain warmth and, and, and just love to it, you know? So. so I would say not only warmth, but the tweeter also has a crispness to it that I really enjoy, right? Mm. So, uh, you know, if you look at the top end, when you really jump up at the tweeter range, um, I liked the warmth of the mid-range better on the LS50. Uh, this was quite comparable, but the high end I think has a little more sparkle to it, and I don't know. I just that for me pulls me in, and it really, really makes it sound good, especially when you have the hi hat and the cymbal, and you know the sibilance of the voice sounds really nice. And another thing I really enjoyed about them is they're very sensitive, so it didn't take a lot to drive them. They're right out of the gate. They were nice. The volume was nice and loud. Uh, it, it was. It was a great sounding speaker, man. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. And for that reason, I'm gonna vote the Martin Logan 35 XTI the winner of this competition. And that, if you if you second that vote, that means these are the winners. I I am going to dissent to a degree, and I have to I have to talk through this for just a minute. So for me, I thought, see, I thought we had an agreement, but now now he's 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 uh, we can never agree on anything, <laughs> never. So I love the Martin Logans. I love the sound. The Kefs I love as well. I think both of those edge out the Perion Audio uh, just from a, which one did I like the most right now? Um, 
I think they all have their spots and places. Uh, but I, I, I'm having a hard time choosing between the Kef and the Martin Logan. They're just so different. I, I, I know you're like, what? What are you talking about? Well, uh, here's the thing. I think they were all phenomenal. I think they're, they're, they're. I think they were all great in their own respect. I, I like each of those, at least of these speakers, very, very much. Um, if it came down to it, I would say it came down to the Aperion versus the Martin Logan for me. Okay. Um, only because I like the balance of the Aperion. Yeah, it needs to be pushed a little more, needs a little bit more juice. But overall, I'm a huge fan of that balanced, nice balanced sound. Uh, and, and it has more bass response than the Kefs did. Now, here's the kicker. Or maybe I am rescinding. I don't know. Uh, with, the, with the Kef, I haven't heard clarity like that in a long time. That's that's the thing for me. That's what got me. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, okay, here's here's how I'm going to line, line it out for you. So, if it was just the bookshelf speaker, no subwoofer, no other support, Martin Logan. Yeah. 100%. If I can add a sub to this, then the decision becomes a lot more murky for me. Um, that Kef mid-range for vocals really, really gets me. So pretty close. And then uh, the Perion, nice, solid, uh, all-around speaker. But yeah. for me, it, the, these two edge it out just a little bit. And talking about pricing, yes, the, the Aperions are the lesser expensive out of the three. So the Martin Logan comes in at twelve ninety nine. The Kef comes in at fourteen ninety nine. So now from the Kef to I don't know. Talk, if, oh yeah. So this is a hard decision, man. This is a really hard decision because once yeah. you once you put in price into the into the factor, because you could take that five hundred bucks and you could buy a source and preamp or mm -hmm. a source. You could buy it integrated, right, and have a whole system if you wanted to. So if you if you if you factor in the money, then. Yeah. The uh, Aperion probably bubbles to the top. If you take the money off the table and just say, which one did you like the most? For me, without a subwoofer, Martin Logan, hands down. With sub support, uh, Martin Logan and Kef or a toss up, just depends. I think it gets to the point of you're looking at aesthetics and things like that. Right. We, to, we, to need to, we need to decide on a winner that's gonna go on to the next round though. Martin Logan. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll second that. Because, because this is a standalone comparison. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we can't, but, but I do appreciate your, your other variables because that's something people think about, too. Yeah. Because paired with a subwoofer, I think the Kefs were, were, were great. Yeah, wow. they, they are phenomenal. And paired with a subwoofer, the Aperions are great, too. So um, I wish but, there was an LS50 Meta Tower Edition. I thought they had one, didn't they? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think up. the Meta material is If they had not then you guys yet. just got some, uh, some inside scoop from us. Yeah. And we want royalties. Now that we have a champion, it has to defend its title. So the 35 XTIs on the next episode of... Uh, Battle of the Bookshelves, number four. Number four. We're gonna we're gonna go up against the uh, Dowley Oberon threes and the Q Acoustics thirty thirty eyes. And if we can find anything else along the way, we might include it. Maybe some surprise, a surprise guest, you know. Oh, but dude, the Q Acoustics, I'm super excited. I've not heard those before, ever. I've already released the video on it, and honestly, they are inc for the price for three ninety nine for the pair. You're getting yourself into a really nice speaker, so um, I think they're gonna give the 35 XCIs a run for their money, and, and it, as well as the third, Dolly. The Dolly Oberon threes are at a third of the cost, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the Dolly Oberon threes are gonna come in at uh, at about seven, eight hundred dollars, and even those are phenomenal speakers as well. So I'm excited for him to hear them because he hasn't heard them yet. Mm -mm. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get working on that, and that should be happening here uh, in the next few weeks. You know? Yeah, right so, on. Okay, thank you guys so much, Giles. Thanks for having me on uh, in your in your in your lair in, in the home theater fanatics uh, <laughs> theater. And also, before we close, if you haven't, please like and subscribe. Buttons right down below. Uh, make sure to also ring the bell. And also, Patreon. Um, here, here are my patrons. Here, are Mike's patrons. You make make sure you go check that out. Links will be down below. Here's one out of two patrons. So yeah, I spent my money. Uh, if you guys want to support us, I mean, we uh, we work really hard for this, so we definitely need your support and would love your support. So uh, yeah, our all of our information will be in the description below, as well as links to where you can get all these cool speakers and stuff like that. So Heck yeah, um, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Absolutely, thank you. Take care. <laughs>